Okay, and number seven, right? All right, yeah. so we are solving here by substitution. So remember what the first step is. You wanna try and get one variable alone in one equation, okay? So okay. yeah, I'm looking at this one and I can totally see why this one's tricky because none of them are gonna be nice right all of them yeah. are going to require a fraction which you know it happens so um we're going to do our best what i would recommend is i would go ahead with number seven i would take that top equation and i would try to get this x by itself right here because i can divide eight by two easily it's just the three but you know we'll make it work so let's go ahead and try and get that by itself so we'll take 2x minus 3y equals negative 8. And I'm going to try and get x by itself. So I'll add 3y to the other side. So now that's gone. I've got negative 8 plus 3y. Feel okay, free to stop me at any stuck. OK. So now here, you are just going to keep going. You're going to divide everybody by 2. OK, so now I'm here. Negative eight divided by two gets me the negative four. And if it's easier, if you don't want to deal with the fraction here, I'm actually okay with doing three divided by two is just 1.5. So it's not a bad decimal to work with. So do you want to try it in, a, in working with it as a decimal? Yeah. Yeah, that might be a little bit easier. So if we have 1.5 Y, okay, that's, that's not so bad, right? We can deal with this. Yeah. So now, we have one variable all by itself. So I'm going to take everything that it's equal to, right? That whole box. Yes, exactly. I'm going to go into the next equation and I'm going to plug it in for X right there. Okay. So let's see what that looks like. So that'll be negative seven times everything that X is negative four plus 1.5 Y. plus 4y equals 15. Okay, and now we can just solve for y. So negative seven times negative four is now positive 28. Oops. Negative seven times 1.5 is gonna be a negative. And then what is that? Seven times 1.5 gets me 10.5. Plus the four y equals 15. All right, let's combine these two together. So that's gonna get me four. That's a negative 6.5. Sorry, I'm trying to make a decimal, but it's like, that's a decimal right there. Jeez. Okay, now we can minus the 28 over. And 15 minus 28 is a negative 13. Thank you, look at you. And then divide. So that ends up being a two. Okay, does that all make sense so far? Uh, yeah, wait, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a decimal again there. Decimals don't come up very well on this. All right, so now all I have to do is go back and find out what that X is. So remember, I just go right back here and I'm just gonna plug in two for Y. And I should have it. Let me switch colors again. So X is gonna equal negative four plus 1.5 times two. Good. And 1.5 times two is negative just three. One. Yeah. Yeah, so I just get there. And then always give your answer as an ordered pair, negative one comma two. So this one is tricky because there's that, that fraction or decimal in there, but you can definitely work with it. It just makes it more annoying. Were there any other ones on this particular page, either Olivia or Pablo, that you wanted some help with? No, the other ones were pretty straightforward. They were okay? Olivia, how about you? Were you okay with this stuff? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. How is, um, go ahead. 
Working on four. On the same page? Yes. Right. Sure. We're not playing with Kara. Oops. Okay, so here's number four. All right, so let's see. I want to get one variable alone in one equation. This one, there's definitely one that's going to be easier than all the others. And do either of you see which one it is? Which what? variable should I try to get by itself? Pablo, I'm sorry, what'd you say? Oh, uh, uh, oh I thought you said something. Which variable would I get alone in which equation? Which would be easiest? I'll give you a hint. I wouldn't use that one at all. That one's not going to be nice because, first of all, there's a seven. Seven's usually not a nice number to deal with. Oh, hold on. We got someone coming. We've got Tyler joining us. Hang on one second. Let's see. Oh, he was there and then he left. Oh. Tyler, I see that you've joined us, but I don't have, I don't know. I can't see you and I can't hear you. So um, I'm hoping that you can hear me. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so we are. Um, this is the, Tyler, if you can hear me, this is the work from 421, solving systems by substitution, and we're about to go over number four. I was just asking Pablo and Olivia if they knew which one of these two equations would be uh, easiest to get a variable by itself in. And so we decided the second one's not nice at all because it has a seven in it, and I can't really get any of those variables by themselves easily. But in this top one, if I tried to get the y by itself, that would actually work out really well because I can divide everybody by two and I don't have to deal with any fractions. So that's gonna be my easiest route. You could pick any variable, right? You could have gotten this x by itself if you really wanted, but who wants to deal with fractions with sevens? I don't, so I wouldn't bother with that one. So let's go ahead and use the top one and I'm going to get the Y by itself. Okay, so let's get rid of all these marks that I made. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes I hit one too many and then it all comes back. Any hoosers. So we're gonna take a look at negative eight X minus two Y equals negative 22. And I'm gonna try and get this Y by itself. So that means I'm gonna have to add eight X to both sides. So now I have negative two Y equals negative 22 plus 8x. And now I can just divide everybody by a negative 2. So now I have a positive 11 and a minus 4x. So is that okay for everybody? Yes. Does that make sense? Okay. And now I have y by itself. So I'm going to take everything that y is equal to and I will go right back to that other equation. So I haven't used the second equation yet. So I'm gonna go right back there and pop in what y is equal to, okay? So let's do that. I'll switch to blue. And I'm kinda, I'm gonna do it down here because I don't have a ton of room. So that'll be seven x minus two and now times everything that y is, 11 minus four x equals 23. Okay, so now I'm here. All I have to do is solve for x now. So I'll be a minus 22 and a plus 8x equals 23. I know. All right, we'll combine the 7x and the 8x. That gets me 15x. And now I'm just going to add the 22 to the other side. Twenty three and twenty two is forty five. So when I solve for x, I just get three. three. Perfect. So now all I have to do is go back and solve for y, but it's a lot easier because I already, well, I know I just need to pop in a three for x right there. 
and so I'll throw in that three. So that's just going to be 11 minus 12 or if you think of negative one, you are correct. So I give my answer as a nice ordered pair. X was three, Y was the negative one. Okay, and don't forget that you can always check these answers. Whatever you get as your solution, you can go to either of the original equations, plug in the X and Y that you got, and it should absolutely give you a true statement. And if it doesn't, then something's not right. Okay. Can you go over uh, number nine on the work for 422? I sure can. Before I leave this page though, were there any other ones from this assignment, the 421? Anybody have anything from 421? No? Okay, so let's get up that four. I'm checking. Oh, sorry. Just so you guys know, I did put I did put some notes from Cecilia's uh, video on here too. So that number four that we just did is on um, my notes. So you, just another reference that you guys can use. My son is still asleep, so we're lucky for now. But yesterday he woke up at like. I don't know, 7.30, which is not like him because he goes to bed super late. So I'm just praying. I'm like, I hope he just keeps staying asleep <laughs> until my Zooms are over. <laughs> it gets interesting when he's awake. Can you do number five? On the same page? Yeah. I sure can. All right, so number five, we want to get one of the variables alone and one of the equations. So I'm sorry, I'm number seven. This. Oh, seven? Did no. we do seven? Yeah, we just did seven. Yeah, we did seven. Uh, yeah, so... I, you go with this page then? Good. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So you want me to go to the other one? Yeah, go to number nine on the other one. Okay. <clears throat> okay that one was interesting cases right yeah okay and number nine you said mm -hmm. okay so here's number nine on that on uh the 422 work whoop okay there we go um okay so we're still solving by substitution um i would still probably if you have any of your variables that don't have a coefficient that's probably going to be a really easy one to get by itself so i'm looking right here at this x because it's just an x right oh. it doesn't have a number in front of it that i'll need to divide by so i'm going to get that x by itself by just adding this 4y to the other side so when i do that I'll get x equals 7 plus 4y. Is that okay, everybody, if I just add the 4y to each side? Yeah. Okay. So now I have x all by itself. And, oops. I have everything that x is equal to. So I'm going to go to the other equation, and I'll pop it in for x right there. Okay. So let's see what that looks like. I'll have negative 3 times 7 plus 4y plus 12y equals negative 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and distribute that negative 3. All right, I notice that I have a negative 12y and a plus 12y. So they're just going to cancel each other out. And then I'm left with negative 21 equals negative no, 4. 
Exactly. So anytime you get a statement where everything, all your variables canceled out, but then you're left with something that doesn't make any sense, that's no correct. No solution. Because these two lines are what? Different. They are going, if I were to graph these two, what would they look like? Oh, wow. Uh. What kind of lines have no solution? Um, oh, yeah. vertical lines? Mm, the word I'm looking for starts with a P. Parallel. Parallel. Because remember, parallel means that they are going to never cross each other. Right. So remember, that's what we're finding. The whole, all this stuff, every time you solve a system, the answer that you get is where the two lines cross. So if the two lines never cross, you're never going to get a solution. So that's what, that's when you, when all this math comes out and it ends up being no solution, that means if you went and tried to graph these two lines, they would look something like this and they would just never cross each other. Oh, I love these. Okay. What else can I do for you? Anything from this page? Um, six. Six, sure. Okay, so here's number six. And this time, again, I notice right here, I have that X that doesn't have a coefficient in front of it. So that's probably just going to be my easiest one to get by itself. So if I just minus 7Y from each side. Negative 23 minus 7Y. So perfect, I have a variable all by itself. So I can now take everything that X is equal to and plug it into the equation that I haven't touched yet, which is this one up here. And I can throw that in for X, okay? So let's see what that looks like. I would have two times negative 23 minus seven Y plus 14 Y equals negative 46. Okay, and now we'll just solve for y. So that'll get me a negative 46 minus 14y plus 14y equals negative 46. So again, I have these two that just cancel each other out. So look at what I'm left with. Negative 46 equals negative 46. So what does this mean? One solution. Mm, so Infinite no solution. solutions yes exactly this is true negative 46 does equal negative 46 it's a true statement it's not something that makes no sense like the last one so no, it's true but one solution before oh yeah so this should be infinite solutions because so anytime all your variables cancel out like they did here and then this is a true statement that means you have infinite solutions So what does infinite solutions mean? That means if you were to graph these two lines, so if I went back and I, oh, there we go. If I were to graph these two on the coordinate plane, these are gonna look like this. It's gonna be some line, and then the other one is literally going to be the exact same line right on top of it. Oop. So they don't just cross in one place, they cross in a million places. So, and well, even more than that, an infinite number of places is where they cross. Because remember, lines go on forever. So everywhere that the lines go, they're gonna cross each other. Does that kind of make sense? Uh, yeah. yeah, so if you were to rewrite these two equations in slope intercept form, they would literally be the exact same line, exactly the same. So the thing, the difference between parallel and um, these overlapping lines, parallel lines have the same slope, but they have different y-intercepts. These two lines would have the same slope and the same y-intercept. It's literally the exact same equation. I know they don't look at it right here. They don't look at it at all, but watch this. Watch this cool trick. Oops, hold on. If I took this one and I divided it all by two, if I divided everybody by two, look what comes out. X plus seven Y equals negative 23. 
exactly the same as this one. So they really, really, really are the exact same equation. It just looks like they're not at first, but they are. So yeah, when everything cancels out and you're left with a true statement, that is infinite solutions. Okay, what else you guys got? Let me see. Tyler, I see that your um, your mic is at least connected. Are you? Do you have any questions, Tyler? I can't see you or hear you. So, oh wait, hold on. Can I unmute you? Or do you have to unmute yourself? I don't know. Let me try here. You can unmute them. I'm clicking it and it's not letting me. So I think you might have to unmute yourself if you want to talk. If you don't want to talk, that's okay. I assume if you're not talking, then you don't have any questions. But if you do and it's just like not letting you, you can chat with me. Here, I'll send you a chat. And you can respond to it if you need to. I don't know how to do shift on this. What the heck? Whatever. Okay, so Tyler, I sent you a message. So if you have a question, you can just type it back to me. Olivia, did you have any other questions on this? No. No, you're good. Can you do number eight on the solving systems by substitution? Interesting cases. Yes. Is that, I think that's the one I'm on right here, isn't it? Is it this one? Um, let me see. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, so let's do this one. <clears throat> All right. So again, I noticed this guy doesn't have a coefficient. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll just minus the three Y to the other side to get that one by itself. So I'll have negative nine minus three Y. Okay, so I have, oops. <laughs> I have X all by itself. I'm going to take everything that x is equal to and I'm going to plug it into the other equation right there. All right, so that's going to look like this. 5 times negative 9 minus 3y plus 7y equals negative 5. Okay, so now I'm here and now all I have to do is solve for y. So let's distribute that 5. I'll be a negative 15y, right? Plus 7y equals negative 5. Okay, so I do have some like terms right here to combine. So a negative 15 and a positive negative 7. Eight negative 8, correct. So 45 minus 8y equals negative 5. Then we'll add 45 to each side. So I get a negative 8y equals, that'll be a positive 40. Divide both sides by a negative eight. And it looks like I get a negative five right there. Okay, so I have my y value. Now I need to go back and find my x value. So I'll take that and I'll pop it back up there to figure out what x is gonna be. So negative nine minus three times negative five. So negative three times a negative five, careful it's gonna be that positive 15. And then negative nine and 15 six. leaves me at six, exactly. So my final answer for this one is going to be six comma negative five. So this one um, didn't have any weird cases, right? It wasn't uh, parallel or coinciding or uh, overlapping. Nothing weird happened here because I don't want you to forget, sometimes nothing weird does happen, right? Sometimes it's just a regular one 
if you graph these two lines, they would cross at the point six negative five. So this one wasn't anything special. I just snuck it in there to make you remember that some are just regular old lines that just cross like, like usual. Okay, any other ones anybody's got? Tyler did not send me a message back that I can see. Or maybe he did. I don't know. Let me see. How do I get to the... Um, how do I do the... Oh, I did it on here. How did I do that? Oh, no. He did not send me anything back. So, Tyler, I'm assuming you're okay. Um... Anybody else? Olivia, you have anything else you want me to go over? Yeah, 10. 10 on this same page? Yes. Okay. Okay, so 10, this one, we actually already have half of our answer. I already know the Y coordinate. So when I go to write my final answer all nice and big, I already know that it's gonna be a negative seven right there. So all I have to do is find the X value, okay? So I already have one variable all by itself. I'm just gonna take what Y is equal to and I'm going to plug it into the other equation right there. So that's literally all I have to do for this one. So it should actually be a little bit easier once I figure out um, there should be less steps on this one. All right, so let's multiply the five times negative seven. That gets me a negative 35. And now I'm gonna add 35. So I get two X equals negative 21 and 35 is what, a positive 14? 14. Yeah. So looks like X is seven. So now, I can pop that in right there, and I'm all set. This is a great one. If you ever get a question like this, and uh, you're doing a multiple choice, if the answer doesn't have the negative seven for Y, you can cross it out immediately. So just something to keep in mind if you do any multiple choice with this stuff. Olivia, any other ones you'd like? Um, no. Pablo, how about you? How are you guys finding the videos? Are you able to watch it and, and know what you're doing or? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Olivia, you too? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've tried to, now that we're kind of getting in the swing of things, I've tried to, in the beginning, we didn't really know what we were doing. We didn't know how long the assignment should be. It was kind of a scramble. So in the beginning, things were a little all over the place, but I think I think this might be working. Me doing a couple problems, then you guys trying the rest. Um, I'm hoping that you're not spending an exorbitant amount of time on your math. Um, but I also hope that you're taking some time <laughs> watching the videos and trying them out. I'm so glad that you guys came on my Zoom today. It's been very lonely here the last few weeks. <laughs> Okay, well, before we end, are there any other questions anybody has on anything? Yeah, um, are you gonna okay, have go a ahead. Zoom meeting like every day or like every week or something? Yes, I have one every week, every Friday, and this week is on Thursday because there is no Friday. Right. You guys have off tomorrow. Yeah, so I'm here every week. Okay. Yes, well, I start seeing you every week. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Well, yes, <laughs> I'm here. Come if you want. Um, but I mean, you don't also don't have to wait until Friday. So if you have any questions, absolutely feel free to email either myself or Mrs. Dalton. Actually, it'd be better if you send us both a message and then whichever one of us sees it first can respond. Um, and I'm happy to, like, if you're really stuck on something, we can hop on and do a quick one-on-one -on -one session together if you need to. Um, but yeah, I mean, whatever you guys need, we're here to help. And it's, it's, I know it's crazy for everybody. So, but however we can best support you. You guys are both doing a really good job keeping up on turning in the assignments. Um, so that's great. Oh, I, I'm, I'm including you too, Tyler, even though I can't see or hear you. Um, but yes, it's important to just stay on top of those assignments because you just don't want them to build up and have like, you know, 15 things you got to do all of a sudden. But anyway, is there anything else I could answer for anybody before we end? No, we're good. Ms. Dalton, anything you need to add? No, I think I'm good. Just okay. so you guys know, I am posting the notes for from the video. So you do have that visual part of it too, if that helps. <laughs> yeah. But. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And I'll see you next week, maybe. Friday, 9.15. Have All a right. good weekend. Bye. 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 Bye.